In the last video, we got our project all set up to use Firebase Cloud Functions. We uh, basically did all the housekeeping stuff. We set up the configuration. We installed all the we installed Node.js onto our system if it wasn't already installed, and we installed uh, the Node.js packages that we needed to uh, for our Firebase functions that we're going to use. Now we're ready to actually write the Firebase function itself. So we're kind of we're all still on step three here. So let's open up our let's open up our functions notepad file and remember to get to this uh, all you need to do is go to wherever your project is so here's my for sale directory go into functions and open up this index file so just right click on it go to edit with notepad or notepad plus plus which is what I'm using and here is where we're gonna write the function okay so first uh, I guess we can just pretty much delete all this we just need this we need this constant this is to we, we need this in pretty much any firebase function this is what defines uh, functions and the next thing we need to do is create another constant and this is going to be the request itself this is going to be the request that we actually send to our Elasticsearch server and uh, if you remember from the last video we we installed a node.js library called request promise and that's what we're using it here for it's to help us make HTTP requests it just makes it a little easier it's a node.js library now we need to actually create the function itself. So we use a keyword called exports. So this is what's going to essentially tell Firebase to export this function to your server. So we're saying export function, and now we're gonna create the function name. So we're gonna say index posts to elastic. And that's what our function is gonna be called, index posts to elastic. And then we say equals functions, which is which we defined above. So equals functions. Then we wanna reference the database because it's going to be based on a database trigger. When a person inserts data into the posts node in our Firebase database, so if I pull up the database, if somebody inserts data into this node, into the posts node, we want this function to trigger. And we want it to then take the data and insert it into our Elasticsearch uh, index. So that's what we're doing here. We're saying functions.database, we're referencing the database, and then now we reference the node that we're interested in. The node we're interested in is posts, Sorry, I just kind of hiccuped in the middle of that sentence. The node we're interested in is posts, and uh, then what we can do is insert a variable. So because if you look at Firebase, we have posts and then the post ID, and the post ID varies. So every post is going to have a different post ID, obviously. So we can use a variable in the function to represent that. So what we can do is do a squiggly bracket, and then just give it a name. So we can say post underscore ID. And that's just letting it know that this this parameter is going to be variable. It's going to change. And then that's all we need to do for that. And then we can go to the next line. And I'm just going to tab in and say on write. Because this is the trigger that we're looking for. We're, we're waiting for somebody to write to the database. There's different triggers. You can do on delete, on update. Um, there's Yeah, there's different triggers. If You can check out the Firebase documentation for the triggers. So I think HT, uh, we want to look in database triggers, real-time database triggers. And this will outline all the different types of triggers. You have on write, on create, on update, on delete. So I'm just using one of those triggers. I just want to make sure that I reference the documentation for everything I do here just so at the end of this you guys know that I didn't just kind of pull this out of my ass and you know that where you can go get help if you need help. Uh, so sorry if I'm going a little slow but I just want to make sure that I'm referencing the documentation. Okay so then on write and then we can do we create an event and we do this little arrow thing this is a this is a node.js thing I know it probably seems weird to a lot of you who don't know node.js I, I don't really know node.js very well so it definitely seems weird to me uh, this is just how they do things and so make sure to close that bracket off and then do a bracket so that this is completely closed off now and now we're gonna write kind of what's next so we need to create some variables the first one is going to be the post data and to get the post data we do event dot data dot value and these are all keywords for node.js so what our function is doing here is it's looking at the database for this node when a new one is created this will be triggered and it triggers an event basically the event is a data snapshot that's gonna this is returning a data snapshot and this is what we're seeing right here so by going event dot data dot value we're retrieving the value of the data snapshot in that location so basically we're retrieving the data snapshot under this variable post ID so what it's going to do is it's going to retrieve all this data right here basically that's that's what it's retrieving that that would be the event dot data dot value all this JSON data right here 
So that is what, uh, where's my window, there it is. That's what this post data is going to be. And our next variable, we need to get the post ID. And the post ID, you can do event.params and then dot data, no, event.params dot uh, post ID. And so now you're probably wondering, okay, that's different than data, what's going on here? So by doing event.params, you can reference a parameter that you added to the reference. So the only parameter I have up here is post ID. So by doing event.params, I'm letting the function know that I'm talking about this path here. And then if I do post ID, then it knows that, okay, I'm, it's, I'm talking about whatever variable is this. So in, in the case of our Firebase database, that means it's going to retrieve the post ID, which is this right here. So that is how that works. Um, just to kind of give you another example, um, how would I give you another example? So what else is this? What else, this is also going to be very too. So say, say I wanted to get the user ID. Um, I could go, I could change this and just go um, user ID because it's going to be different, right? It's always going to be a variable. I could do user ID and then I could do params dot user ID and then it would retrieve this, this value, whatever value was in there. So just kind of to give you guys another, another example of how that works. Okay, so now let's print it to the log. So this is the same as using any log for web development. Uh, we just do uh, console.log and this log will actually show up in your Firebase console. So we can use this for debugging. So we can say uh, indexing the post and just do a semicolon. And here we can do the post, we can put, print the post data. And that way, um, when this function runs, we can actually take a look and see what happens. So if we go to the, the Firebase console, we go to functions and I can say get started, sure. Yeah, I've already done all that. Um, then if I go to the log section, this is where that log will get written. So we can use it for debugging. So this, this, this will literally get po posted to this log right here. So that's why it's important to include logs in your functions. All right, now we're gonna get some parameters that are specific to Elasticsearch. So the first one is gonna be Elasticsearch uh, config, which is that config we set in the console. So we can go functions.config to retrieve the configuration file. And then we can do Elasticsearch uh, because that's what we called everything. And then we can go let elastic search URL equals elastic search config dot URL. Because if you remember from the console, that's how we set the URL. So we have elastic search dot URL. So that will retrieve that URL. And then we can do uh, let elastic search method equals post data. So post data question mark and we got to set the, the 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 HTTP post method we're going to use so we use question mark post if I could type post and then uh, colon delete because we can also use deletes so this this is defining what HTTP, HTTP methods that we're going to be able to use with this function so we want to be able to post information and we also want to be able to remove information if it's removed from the Firebase database. So that's why, that's what we're, uh, we're defining here. And whoops, I actually uh, forgot to include this. This isn't done. So we need the URL and then we want to reference our node. So that's going to be posts and then it'll be in a new post. And let's see, close that. And then we want to reference the post ID. And that's where it's going to be stored in Elasticsearch. So we have posts, post, and then post ID. So if you remember from Postman, that's how we define it. We have a mapping, or I guess a index named posts, and then our mapping is a post object. And then it'll be the post ID. So that's what I'm defining here. We have posts for the index, the post object, and then the post ID for the kind of the hierarchy, I guess. And I need a plus sign here. Now we're ready to actually create the request. So if we look at the documentation, I know I briefly mentioned it here. Um, this is kind of, this is generally what we're after here. It's very similar if you'll notice, you know, they have an exports, they have their function, they create a trigger on write, and then they're returning a request. Uh, so their request is defined up here by request dash promise, which is pretty much the same thing we have. Like this is very similar. I'm actually going to copy this because it's so similar. And we're going to go back to our project and I'm going to paste it in and ooh, this is ugly. So fix 
fix all of that and tab that in. Uh, but this is going to be very similar to what we're doing. So our URL obviously is our Elasticsearch URL and our headers. Um, one is content type. So I'm copying what's from Postman, right? So if we go to Postman, go to headers, we have content type, application slash JSON, we have authorization, then we have basic, and then our, our authorization parameters. So we could do that, that would work, or we can get rid of headers and we can define, we have the URL, we can define an auth uh, section here. So if we go auth, then we can go username and we can go elastic search config dot username and then password elastic search config dot password and that's why I included those in here in the configuration file so we have our password and we have our username so that way we can just attach it in this off section and then also above here we want to include the method so or the methods I guess so we want our elastic search methods that we're allowed to use which is either post or delete. And now of course we need to change the body. The body is just going to be post data. And then we need to let them know that it's going to be the type of data is going to be JSON. So we can just do JSON uh, dash true. And I have a feeling that something is wrong here. So we have request. Oh, I see what I did. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't have copied that. So actually what I'll do, I want because I want to define a variable. So I'm going to do elastic search request elastic search request equals this thing and make sure to delete this uh, bracket there so that closes that bracket so we have a new variable called elastic search request and then we're going to go below that and then I'm going to return the request so I could do return uh, request and then I can pass our elastic search request and then do dot then this is to this is what you do to retrieve a response in Node.js. So we do uh, dot then response and then do that little arrow thing again. Squiggly bracket and close. Looks like it deleted my squiggly. There we go. So close that off and then inside here we can do console dot log and do elastic search response and we can add our whoops add a response from the request response and there we go so that that will achieve what we were after and make sure to check your brackets down here so this one closes this this one closes our up there uh, this circle bracket closes our event up here um, and then so this one isn't really this isn't doing anything so this needs to be removed so that should be good can move that over uh, yeah this should be good so hopefully I explained that well I went pretty slow uh, if you're confused about the functions just watch the video again um, it will get easier definitely it's just you're probably not familiar with node.js that's the thing uh, so make sure to save that notice I saved it and now we're ready to deploy the function to Firebase so we can go back to our console that has our project window open and we do uh, Firebase deploy dash dash only functions and this will deploy any functions that it finds in the functions folder so I can just hit enter and this is gonna take a while I'd say usually it takes like five minutes or maybe a little less but can be up to five minutes uh, so obviously I'm gonna pause the video and I'll be back when it's done uh, it looks like I got an error so if you ever if you have a typo or anything like that in your in your uh, function file in your index file it'll let you know so it says error occurred while uh, parsing your function it points out where the error is so you can see it's pointing to the body section here so if I open this up and I go here I can see that I forgot a comma so I need to put a comma right there and that should be good it's kind of the bad thing about these functions is they take so long to deploy and if you have like a typo or something you can take it takes you know like five minutes for it to find the error and then you have to fix something stupid like a comma like that and then redeploy um, I guess you could put it into a node.js text editor but anyway all right, I'll be back when it's de okay. So function is deployed. That means it's live on our server. So uh, we it's not like we can go and see it live on the server or anything like that. Oh wait, yes we can. We can go to the dashboard and check. So there's our there's our function. You can see it right here. You can 
not really do anything. We can just view the logs of the usage, but there is no logs and there's no usage because we haven't used it yet. So uh, at this point, what we could do to test it is create a new post on our app. So let me bring up Visor here and we'll go to create a new post. I'll choose an image. Uh, I don't know. Sure. A pen. Awesome pen. This pen is in great condition. Price will be $5. Country Canada and British Columbia City Abbotsford and we'll do a fake email. Uh, fake email. I guess that might actually be someone's email. Mitchell Tavian at gmail.com and let's post. Now that we have our trigger set up, the function should pick that up. So if we go into here and we go into logs, you can see that it's live right now because I can see the pause button and we're waiting basically to see if any logs show up. This could take, it could be a bit of a delay, so be patient. But there you go. Okay, cool. So we can see our logs. Uh, function was executed. Uh, we can see the log, this is indexing post and then the Elasticsearch response that responds with what happened. So everything looks successful. It was successful in adding it to our index. And we can test it by actually using Postman and searching the index. So we'll open up a new Postman tab after I copy this URL. And we're gonna make a get request. Uh, I'm gonna go post. We wanna search the post object, um, the post object section of the index. And then we do question mark, I believe it's Q equals, well let's do Q equals star. That means basically we want to search for anything. Oh no, we have to do um, underscore search. Underscore search and then question mark Q equals star. That will search for everything in the index. And then of course we need to get our headers. So I'm just going to copy the authorization and go into headers and type content type and do application JSON and do authorization and then type in our key and then we can hit we have a get request selected and we hit send and that will send a request to our server and let's see here so here's so here's the response and so here it is here's here's the post that I just made this is the one we posted we have in Abbotsford the contact email mitchelltavian at gmail.com uh, country is set to my email so there's a there's a problem there for some reason it set my country and my contact email to the same uh everything else looks good though price post id the image uh so yeah everything looks good except for this so that's that's it that we our functions working we have successfully posted something and i queried our server looking for the post and we found it so Everything's working as we expect, except for that little country bug, which I'll take a look at in the next video. So in the next one, what we'll do is uh, start setting up the request to the server from the app. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is exactly what Postman is doing here, but we're going to be doing it from the app. And so that's what we'll do in the next video.